I would like to uh, get your thoughts on how the regulatory landscape has changed since the financial crisis and how that is affecting the bank, non-bank competition. That is really a very good question because regulation is present everywhere in financial services, whether it's banking, investment banks, broker dealers, insurance. Um, and so since the global financial crisis, I think the single biggest step was the passage of the Dodd-Frank legislation. Uh, and my opinion is the vast majority of that was really good. And then there's been another bill passed by Congress, which adjusted it some, which I think it needed to happen. There's probably further adjustments needed going forward. But Dodd-Frank essentially did two things, I think, that helped a lot. It required banks to have more capital or more transparent identified capital, and it required banks to have more liquidity. And I think it's got to the point now where the American banks are by far the world's leaders. If you go around the world, there are 30 banks that global regulators say are, are globally systemically important. And the American banks, whether it's profitability, it's growth, it's capital, it's liquidity, they stand out as the best. There are eight of them in the United States, eight of the 30. So, so I think that Dodd-Frank generally was pretty good. I think it went a little bit too far and there have been some adjustments to it in some other cases. Um, and then remember too, during the crisis, one of the, the things that happened was the Fed immediately made the big investment banks banks. That's Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley are the two that come to mind right away. And that's changed the investment banking industry a lot. You know, you really don't, my, my parent company is a bank holding company. There are very few big investment banks that aren't banks. And, uh, and I think it's really strengthened the banking system to have that happen. And if you look at the top 25 banks, there are three of them that stand out uh, that are investment banks. Uh, Goldman, Morgan Stanley, and Schwab are all top 25 institutions. And they wouldn't have been there pre-Dodd-Frank. Uh, so, uh, so I think that's that's the biggest change. And then, but on regulation, I'll tell you all this fintech activity that's happened, like we were talking about earlier, has really that innovation has gotten way out in front of regulation. I think the gap between regulation and innovation is the widest I've seen it in financials right now. And I think that's going to start changing in the next Congress. So, uh, and I'll give you an example. If you look at cryptocurrencies, the CFTC, that's the Commodities uh, uh, Commission, they believe that cryptocurrencies are a commodity. The SEC, the Exchange, Securities and Exchange Commission, believes it's, it's an exchange. And the Federal Reserve believes it's a currency that's needed for, uh, for the, to, to supervise the banking system as well as conduct monetary policy. So they all three can't be right. And Congress is gonna have to decide who the regulator is gonna be or what mix it might be. So that's gonna play out in, in the next Congress. And I think that the regulatory barriers are gonna widen and encompass more of the FinTech industry which is going to favor the banks because it's going to be banking regulation imposed on fintechs so there's a level playing field i think that's what's coming 